So now we want to calculate pi such that the fairness criterion is fulfilled. What do we mean by the fairness criterion? By the fairness criterion, we mean that we want the present value at time t of all past payments to be equal to the present value at time t of all future payments. That is what we mean by u of t equal to v of t for all t. We want that to be true for all times t. Now, we can actually show that this holds if and only if v of 0 from the left is equal to 0. And this is a criteria that you are allowed to use in order to show fairness. So we will be using this always. Um, and what does this v of 0 minus mean? Well, it means if we stand at a time just right before 0, then what is the present value of all future net benefits? So the present value of all future benefits minus the present value of all future contributions. And we want those two to be equal to each other such that v of 0 minus is equal to 0. So fairness is fulfilled if the present value of all the future contributions is equal to the present value of all the future benefits. And in a way, it kind of makes sense. If you think of this as a savings account, that would mean that right before the contract starts, you will know that pi is decided such that the present value of all of your future deposits into the bank will also be equal to the present value of all of the future payments the bank will give to you. So neither you nor the bank will earn extra money from this deal, which is why it is fair. Now, how can we determine pi according to the fairness criterion? Well, we have a fair contract if v of 0 minus is equal to 0. So that is if in our case, well, v of 0 minus is just equal to v of 0. And why? Well, that is because we have no payments at time 0. So we can just start exactly at time 0 and look into the future. So we know that fairness is fulfilled if v of 0 is equal to 0. And we also have a calculation for v of 0 from the earlier exercise, the uh, earlier part of this exercise, which is k a n minus pi a k. So fairness is fulfilled if this thing here has the value 0. So this means well, what does this mean? This implies that if we try to isolate pi, then pi will have to be k a n divided by a k. Now, notice that the things on this side, there are no like normal numbers in it. And the reason why is actually because since the benefits are all of size 1, there is kind of an invisible one up here. So if our benefits instead had been of size 10 or something else, then you would have multiplied by 10 up here. Okay, so I'll just remove that invisible one again. And let's just plug in the values of these formulas. You will be able to find these in the book. So this in the numerator is equal to v to the k times a n. Then we have divided by AK. And if you plug in the values of these things, then there are two i's that cancel each other out. And then we have that this is equal to v to the k multiplied by 1 minus v to the n divided by 1 minus v to the k. So in the case where we put in numbers. So now we have found pi such that the fairness criterion is fulfilled. And if we should plug in the numbers k equal 30, n equal 10, 
i equals 0 0.05. And you might be like, well, why isn't there an i over here? Well, that's because it's hidden in the v, because v is equal to 1 plus i to the minus first, right? So if we plug all of this in, then, well, you can try to do it on a calculator. Then you will get that the price you will have to pay each year for the first k years in order to achieve a benefit of 1 in the last 10 years is 0 0.11622. So that was the answer for, um, in citation marks, the second part of this exercise. And in the next part, we will look at the continuous scenario.